Though some examples are more accurate than others, the Gilded Age frequently incorporates history into the series. While some of the show's characters are based on real persons, others are wholly made up. This version gives the Gilded Age the ability to deviate from history in specific situations, and the show benefits from it. Since the show isn't a documentary, it frequently and when needed modifies history to suit its story. The beloved Russell family, who play a significant role in society despite not being historical characters, is the ideal example. The recently affluent Russells follow in the footsteps of a number of families from the era who experience comparable circumstances. The more broad idea of robber barons, which does not directly relate to any one individual, but rather is a composite of them, serves as an inspiration for George Russell, Morgan Spector. In the meantime, Carrie Coon's character Bertha plays the unique role of Alba Vanderbilt, particularly during the opera war in season two. The show's past becomes increasingly complicated with the introduction of fabricated characters. This becomes increasingly obvious as the Russell's storyline ventures beyond the realm of societal strife. A storyline focused on George's company, including the Pittsburgh Steelworkers' strike, is introduced in season two. During this time, the nation saw yet another wave of industrialization, and strikes were frequent. This historical event is a little different from the others, even though the strike is by no means the first in the program. As it did with Emily Warren Roebling's biography, the Gilded Age often approaches history with a strong attention to accuracy, but the strike is a different story. Although laborers did fight for eight-hour workdays at the time, the Homestead strike served as inspiration for this plot, according to series creator Julian Fellows, even though it doesn't precisely reflect one incident. But unlike in the show, this violent strike happened in 1892, not 1883. The dispute erupted between Andrew Carnegie and the steelworkers at Homestead, Pennsylvania, resulting in numerous casualties and a loss of public support for the Union. The Gilded Age's plot takes a different turn, resulting in a more likable George as he tries to work out a deal with Union leader Bill Henderson, Darren Goldstein. This goes to show that the program isn't hesitant to occasionally alter history. The aim of the wide-eyed young sign of a conservative family is to enter the wealthy adjacent clan which is led by the ambitious wife, Bertha, and the ruthless railroad tycoon, George Russell, together with the rakish son, Larry. The Gilded Age tells the story in a unique way by gradually building the strike. In strike-related stories, the avaricious company is nearly invariably the antagonist. However, George Russell is the one who narrates this tale in the Gilded Age. As the conflict intensifies, additional people with comparable problems approach George. As strikes increase in frequency, the circumstances at George's steel mill get worse. George is a quick-thinking businessman who meets with Bill Henderson, the head of the Amalgamated Association of Iron and Steel Workers, in an effort to orchestrate a positive conclusion for his company. Henderson takes the opportunity to address the workers' concerns while Russell tries to appease him by offering him a more senior role. They endure hazardous conditions, put in 12-hour workdays, and receive inadequate compensation. Russell doesn't give in to what, to a contemporary audience, might seem like acceptable requests because they weren't widely acknowledged at the time. As Henderson and the workers refuse Russell's meager compromises, demanding eight-hour workdays and threatening to take their own lives in defense of their cause, the battle intensifies. He gets tired of Russell's negative portrayal in the news, but in a talk with his colleagues, George says he doesn't understand why granting their request is such a big deal. Russell makes the trip to Pittsburgh to have one final meeting with Henderson before acting, but his stance is not altered. Russell says he would bargain on welfare, but he won't pay more than the going rate. But his final attempt to defuse the situation doesn't work since Russell is equally adamant about refusing to back down and Henderson is sticking to his demands. Russell and his colleagues try to end the strike by hiring more workers, but the union members bar the door. The governor's militia is prepared. Russell hears the warning gunfire and dashes outside to investigate. Russell feels pity even though there are people about to shoot and the situation is stressful. He tells the militia to back off and appears to be caving in to the strikes. Although no agreement has been reached, this doesn't officially end the strike, but it is undoubtedly a turn of events for the pragmatic George.